All right, scholars, today we're going to tackle a few centripetal force examples. We're going to start with a classic physics example, which is the old water over the head in a bucket trick. Very snappy name. So the question we want to investigate here is this person, you can't tell exactly, but they have water in that bucket. We'll do this demonstration in class as well. And the question is, when is the tension in the string they're holding the largest? That's the question we want to answer. To help you contextualize that, you can also think about times you've been on a vertical loop on something like a, a roller coaster or a ride at the fair. That can help you contextualize this. So take out your circle tool, draw yourself a nice circle. We're going to make a few assumptions so you can draw while I list those assumptions. First, we're going to assume that the radius of the circle as the person was swinging it remains constant. Is that a good assumption? It depends on how good you are at swinging. Second, for, for right now, for simplicity, we're going to assume that it's going at a constant angular speed. In other words, at the top and bottom of the circle, it's going the same speed. Now, in reality, it's probably going to pick up speed as it falls because it's going to convert potential into uh, kinetic energy. But this is actually going to make it easier uh, to do the analysis for now. So what we want to do is ask the question, and I'll jot that question down now. So again, the question, where is the string under the most tension? So what we'll be doing, I'm going to draw these vector arrows a little bit naively, not knowing which where the tension is going to be bigger. You might already have some idea where it's going to be. So I'll, we want to make sure we draw it from the outer edge to the center. This is the tension at the top of the swing. And this will be the tension at the bottom. So we want to ask the question, uh, where is the tension bigger? So I'm going to put a question mark about, above that because we don't know the answer. Is it bigger at the top or bigger at the bottom? Now in order to do this, we're going to use Newton's second law. If you remember back to first semester, that's how we solved almost every question we came across. But now we're going to use our special version where we're talking about centripetal force. So remember, we're, we're going to start using a, a slightly different symbol. This is the sum of the forces keeping something in a circle. Or in other words, the centripetal force on something is mv squared over r. You can also write that as m omega squared r. But for right now, we're going to just go with uh, this orientation. Uh, it's a little bit easier, perhaps, to work with. So just like before, we would always start, after we use Newton's second law, we would need to draw a free body diagram for the top and the bottom. So wherever we're interested in analyzing, we need to do a free body diagram for it. So this is perhaps the most important thing about solving circular motion questions. So if we look at our um, situation, Let's just start at the top. Now, since we're assuming we're on Earth here, everything has a weight force. So here up at the top, we have got a weight force acting down. I'll, I'll actually just add that um, here in a different color. We'll go green. So we've got weight force here, mg, acting down. And um, so we want to label that on our free body diagram. So we've got the weight force, mg, and we've also got the tension at the top, uh, oops, top. And then at the bottom, we've got the tension up towards the middle. Remember, that's um, acting up to keep the string in the circle. And in this case, we happen to have the, the weight force acting against the thing staying in the circle. So the dynamics are going to be a little bit different. Let's set up that free body diagram. At the bottom, we're going to have tension, we'll call that T bottom and then we've got mg now again we're being a little naive here we don't know the lengths of those vectors we don't know if they're equal we don't know which one is bigger now i want to make one other note here which is that we always want to and this is especially helpful with circular motion we always want to label the direction of the acceleration now we've learned a basic fact which is that centripetal force always acts towards the center so does centripetal acceleration so at the top, the acceleration is going to be pointing down. Let's label that, not on our free body diagram, but right next to it to show that that is the centripetal acceleration acting downward for the top. And for the bottom, the centripetal acceleration is going to point towards the middle of the circle, and it's going to be in the opposite direction. That's going to be very helpful here as we set this up. So we're going to set up Newton's second law for the top and for the bottom 
by plugging in the information from our free body diagram. So you can see I am jotting down, I've just rewritten Newton's second law, and then on, remember the instructions for how to do this are, the left side says, add up all the forces, keeping the thing moving in a circle. That in, in English is what the left side is saying on both of these. So what we need to do is take the forces. You'll have weight force, you'll have the tension at the top, you can see them both on our picture here, and importantly our acceleration is down. So I'm going to do kind of an unusual thing here, and I'm going to pick this direction as negative, down here, and just for this one, and I'm going to pick, um, that means that all of these are going to go in there as negative. So we've got negative mg minus t at the top, and that is equal to minus mv squared over r. The negative is because they're all down, okay? So it seems a little redundant. I can just cancel the negatives, of course. That's okay. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. So this is just mg plus t top equals minus, I'm sorry, equals mv squared over r. And this is actually pretty easy. We are trying to find, remember, t top so we can compare it to the tension at the bottom. So all I have to do is simply subtract mg from both sides. So t top is equal to mv squared over r minus mg. And that's actually it. That is the tension at the top of the loop. Now, if I gave you some information like the mass, the velocity, the radius, of course, you could calculate that tension. But right now, what we want to know is how does that compare in terms of magnitude with the bottom? So it's a very similar procedure at the bottom. I'm actually going to pause for a moment, see if you can figure out how to plug this information into that equation. So this one, I have decided that the acceleration is going to be in the positive direction. So tension is up in the same direction as the acceleration. So those are both positive when I plug them in. And mg is acting down. It's trying to pull the bucket out of the circle, uh, whereas the tension is working to pull it into the circle in the same direction as the acceleration. So from there, again, all we have to do is the one step, add mg to both sides, and we'll end up with, oops, I'm sorry, that should say t bottom. Let me fix that. So uh, I fixed it as t bottom minus mg is equal to mv squared over r. So these things are the centripetal forces working together to keep it moving in a circle. All we have to do is add mg to both sides. So this would be the tension at the bottom of this um, circle is equal to mv squared over r plus m. G. Now, this seems a little weird not having any numbers. We're trying to answer this question, which one's bigger, top or bottom, um, you know. Let's take a look. Here, if we we're going to calculate it, if we plugged in mv squared over r. That term is exactly the same. The tension at the bottom is saying add the weight, add m times g. We all know that's the weight force. And the top, tension at the top is saying subtract it. So if we were going to do a calculation, this would be bigger. Now, let's check that with our experience. If you're a person like this and you've ever swung a bucket or done anything similar to this, you know that your shoulder feels the tension the most. You feel like you have to pull the hardest when you get to the bottom. And I know the gift keeps going here, but the reason for that is at the bottom, you have to pull up. The weight force is trying to pull that bucket out of a circle. So you have to do extra work. Whereas at the top, the weight's actually helping keep it in a circle. It's easier at the top because gravity is helping you. So to say that again, at the top, gravity helps you pull the thing in the circle. Whereas at the bottom, gravity's trying to pull the darn thing out of a circle. Keep it going in a straight line. You want to pull it out of that straight line into the circle. So there you have it, folks. The tension at the bottom would be larger. In fact, there's lots of applications of this. So if you have ever... Um, gone on a loop-the-loop -loop ride, where do you feel heavier? You feel really heavy at the bottom, and you actually feel like you might fall out of your seat downward when you're up at the tippy top. So hopefully you've had some experience with this, and that's a, a pretty classic example of a uh, centripetal force equation. Nice work, folks.